What's up guys and welcome to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover all things stocks and investing. In this video, we're taking a look at one of the most legendary short selling fails of the past decade. This short selling fail saw two hedge fund titans clash and nearly destroyed one of them's career. A multi-million dollar smear campaign, a billionaire battle on national television, insider trading, and an FBI investigation. Bill Ackman's activist short of multi-level marketing firm Herbalife went down in the history books as one of the most disastrous shorts of all time. Shout out to our channel members who voted on this video topic and get access to our non-time sensitive videos one day in advance. Usually, epic short selling fails tend to involve high flying, high growth tech stocks like Tesla, or stocks that don't conform to traditional models of valuation like GameStop. We've already seen David Einhorn's drawn out battle with Elon Musk and Tesla, which almost destroyed his hedge fund, and Mark Spiegel's short position that ruined an otherwise impressive investing record. But this short selling disaster centers around a multi-level marketing firm, Herbalife. In late 2012, Bill Ackman released a research report accusing Herbalife of running a pyramid scheme. He had done extensive research on the company and was convinced that it was a fraud, and took on a $1 billion position against the company. This eventually led to a drawn out battle between him and another Wall Street titan that involved the SEC, FBI, and insider trading scandals. Bill Ackman is one of the most prominent investors today, but he's had a decorated career as an investment professional since the early 2000s. A Harvard College and Harvard Business School graduate, he started his hedge fund Pershing Square Capital Management in 2004 after previously running a different investment firm with a fellow Harvard grad. He immediately made a name for his company by taking a large position in the fast food chain Wendy's and then pressuring the board to sell off Tim Hortons in an IPO. This eventually happened and brought millions of dollars of profits to Ackman's fund. Throughout the next several years, Ackman continued to generate market-beating returns through activist investing by purchasing significant shares of companies and pressuring management to take certain corporate actions. After returning 40%, 22.5%, and 41% in 2005, 2006, and 2009, his fund's assets under management had grown to $3 billion and continued to grow to a peak of $16 billion in 2014. His activist investing strategy was working, and he seemed unable to make sub-market returns for his investors. And then Herbalife happened. In 2013, Ackman took notice of a multi-level marketing company called Herbalife. Herbalife sells nutritional supplements, but instead of selling through traditional retail channels, they sell through a multi-level marketing structure. Anyone can become an Herbalife distributor. As a distributor, you get to buy Herbalife products at a discount and sell them to your friends, family, and other people in your community for a markup. Importantly, if you refer a new distributor to Herbalife, you also earn a commission on each one of their sales. Multi-level marketing schemes are controversial because they are oftentimes scams designed to extract money from the distributors who are often just regular working class people. If the end product is any good, you could usually sell it through traditional retail channels and customers would buy it. The fact that Herbalife uses independent distributors to sell its products should at the very least raise questions. When a new distributor joins Herbalife, they are required to put up some money up front to buy the first batch of Herbalife products. If they can sell these products for a markup or recruit other distributors, they can make a profit. But if nobody wants to buy the products, they have to eat the loss of the upfront investment. Not all multi-level marketing schemes are bad. Sometimes they sell legitimate products that have real demand from end consumers. However, if there is very little end demand from consumers, eventually the distributors will be unable to sell their inventory and will be left holding the bag. If the company knows this will likely be the case but tricks distributors into joining anyways, this is called a pyramid scheme and is illegal. In 2013, Bill Ackman came to the conclusion that Herbalife was a pyramid scheme and shorted the stock in a very public manner. Thanks for coming in today, Bill. Sure. First of all, what are you accusing Herbalife of? Of being a pyramid scheme. We believe Herbalife is a pyramid scheme. And explain, what do you mean by that? Well, Herbalife sells uh, products, weight loss products, nutritional supplements, uh, vitamins, things like that. But what they, what they really sell, and what their distributors make money from, is by selling a business, what they call a business opportunity. And the business opportunity is to sell the business opportunity to your friends who in turn sell the business opportunity to their friends. And uh, we don't believe there's really uh, end demand for the product by true retail consumers at the suggested retail prices for the product. How much money have you spent betting against Herbalife? Uh, we have a short position of over a billion dollars. It is illegal to run a pyramid scheme. It's much like a chain letter. If you remember, as a kid, you know, you get a letter in the mail and it says, well, you know, send ten, send ten cents to the, the six people on the on the envelope who came before you, and in three weeks you'll have a thousand dollars. The problem with endless chains, the problem with pyramid schemes, is that it requires an enormous number of recruits at the bottom to feed the people at the top. Inevitably, the people at the bottom lose money, 
and only the people at the top make money, and it's not a legitimate business. And it's an, as a result, it's inherently fraudulent. Ackman came out publicly calling the company a scam and put his money where his mouth was, initiating a $1 billion short position on the company. Ackman was one of the most well-respected investors at the time, so his acquisitions had a significant impact on the stock, which fell roughly 40% after he initiated the short. After initiating the short position, Ackman spent $50 million on a sophisticated PR campaign designed to expose the company and hurt its share price. This campaign included private investigators, lobbying, interviewing former Herbalife distributors, and other primary research. He gave numerous media appearances and multi-hour presentations showing the findings of his investigations to the public. He thought the company will eventually be shut down by regulators and the stock will be worth $0. If this happened, he stood to make $1 billion from his short. So the $50 million PR campaign was just a small cost of doing business. However, the fact that he stood to benefit from the stock price declining caused many to doubt the integrity of his accusations. When you have $1 billion on the line, this could motivate you to over-exaggerate the accusations or otherwise make Herbalife stock look worse than it actually is. In early 2013, another billionaire hedge fund manager, Carl Icahn, announced that he had taken the opposite side of the trade to Ackman with a 13% long stake in Herbalife. On the news, Herbalife stock shot up 23% in after-hours trading. This was also after another hedge fund manager, Dan Loeb of Third Point, also took a significant long position in the same company. Suddenly, Bill Ackman's short position seemed fallible, and the public began to lose confidence in his accusation of Herbalife as a fraud. In one ABC clip, a former Herbalife employee was revealed to have been paid by Ackman to spread dirt about Herbalife. I had a moral conflict that was really big. A former executive who left the controversial Herbalife company in 2011, Boracqua said he was ready to put himself in jeopardy in order to reveal what he called the ethical shortcomings of the nutrition products company. I decided to leave my job. Boracquest told us his legal bills and travel were being paid by one of the company's Wall Street critics, but he wasn't receiving, he said, any other benefit. No. Not at all? Nothing. I'm not getting a benefit. But now we've learned there was something he did not tell us. This secret deal with Herbalife Wall Street critic Bill Ackman, a financial cushion that could pay Boracquez as much as $250,000 a year for 10 years if he lost his new job for talking to the media or the government, with other benefits, a potential total value of $3.6 million. And we're not paying him for what he has to say. What we're doing but is- you did pay him. You don't think that's a problem? I think it's important that it's disclosed. That's a very, very important fact. But Ackman and Boracquez only disclosed the deal to us after questions were raised in this New York Times story about Ackman's financial ties to other critics of Herbalife. At a meeting in a park near his California home, Boracquez told us his answers in our first interview were truthful because he was not receiving payments at the time. He says he only asked for and began receiving the payments, $20,000 a month, a few weeks after the ABC News interview. At which point, he says, he had lost his new job and his wife had lost her job, too. So far, he has collected $80,000 from Acme. Look, I'm... You tried, you tried to hide this from me. Look, there were things... Why did you do that? How can anybody believe what you say if you're not truthful about this? Look, Ryan... No, answer that question. Can you? Look, I had a job. No, how can I anybody... I lost my job. This agreement protects me from any losses. According to the deal, Boracquez has already provided information to government agencies investigating Herbalife. Did you disclose this to the federal agencies? Uh, His lawyer, Stephen Alexander, yeah. then ended we're the done. interview. We're done, Brian. We're this done. is an important question. Yeah. We're done. We're not we're talking. Done. We told you we're not talking about what he's talked to the federal Several months later, in March of 2015, it was reported that the FBI, as well as Manhattan U.S. Attorney's Office, were investigating Ackman for possibly having hired people to make false statements regarding Herbalife. Only a few days later, a separate lawsuit against Herbalife for running a pyramid scheme was dismissed by a U.S. District Judge. Following this, Herbalife stock jumped another 13%. This was the beginning of an epic bull run for the stock, and foreshadowed Ackman's biggest shorting disaster ever. In another development, on September 30th of 2014, the SEC announced charges against two people for engaging in insider trading around Bill Ackman's short announcement. According to the SEC, they were tipped off to Bill Ackman's plan to announce his $1 billion short position and bought puts ahead of time. These charges did not directly involve Ackman, but still spread negative publicity around his highly publicized Herbalife short.
In early 2013, after Carl Icahn made his long position in Herbalife, Scott Wapner hosted both Ackman and Icahn on CNBC's Halftime Report in a legendary heated interview. In the nearly 30-minute exchange, the two hedge fund titans traded insults and accusations of dishonest business dealings. Take a listen to the most heated parts of the interview. Carl, Carl let, me, let me just ask you, though. I mean, the, the, the crux of the, the, the argument doesn't really go back or, or doesn't so much focus on, on 10 years ago, or maybe it does. It, it focuses on the most recent history, and that is Bill Ackman's short play on Herbalife. You criticized him quite heavily for the way in which he, he went public with the short. Would, would you be willing to admit that in the past, I mean, look, you, you've got sharp elbows as well. You, you've got weight to throw around, too, that it, that's the way of the short world, isn't it, Carl? Hey, listen, if I'm going to admit it, I'm not going to, that I own stock, I'm not going to admit it with a guy like you on my TV because I don't think you've, you've been handling this fairly. I think you're trying to attack me and, and bully me into admitting something. And so you expect me to do it on your show? No, I'm not. I, I, I'd like to ask you a question. If you okay. think you're going to bully me into doing it, yeah. You seem like a nice enough guy. I don't think I've ever been on a show with you, but I don't think I take the bullying. So do um, you think that okay. you're giving me all this bull**** and Max Meyer said I could say what I wanted on the show, so I'm saying it. All right. Hey, we'll you know, send, we'll send Max the, uh, the bill. You on your show after you try bullying me and coming okay. up against me, do you? All right. Well, I, let, I let me... I'm known. Hey, look. I think... Let, no, 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 wait, 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 Carl. Let, let me That's just say, true. first of all, let me say, Carl. I don't like being bullied. But I am I, not. I have. I believe. Nobody here. Nobody here is bullying you. First and foremost. Second of all, well, I simply know, asked you. Me. I said, uh, let me finish, me. please. I, mean, I simply you know, asked you. In and start I simply. Ten years ago, why the heck are you getting involved in it? I, I simply asked you to reveal whether you were long Herbalife, as the world wants to know, and the motives behind it. That's all I, we want to know. That's what every person watching this program well, you, wants you know, to know. Me, and if that position is in okay, all... Can I answer? Can I answer? Yeah. You, well, you want yeah. to keep talking? I'm going no, to answer it, please. it to you. Yeah. But right. I'm going to tell you about Herbalife. And I'll tell you what I will tell you and what I said before. Uh, 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 you know, I think Ackman did Herbalife because I don't... I, I obviously don't like Ackman. Ackman is lying about what happened. And right now, I believe... I, and I'm not going to the SEC or the FTC, but I believe he goes out and he has 300 people in a room. This is the typical Ackman. I wouldn't care if it was anybody else but Ackman. But he goes in this room and he gets 300 people and he tells them how bad this company is. It's the classic stuff they did in the 90s. You, 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 you scare the hell out of people, get the stock down. He marks the stock on December 31st and makes 600 million bucks on paper and tells the world how great he is, he's given to charity, and shows the world he's made 12%, which isn't so great anyway. I'd like to say we made 28% last year without going and having to go pump and dump stocks and having to go and have rooms full of people. And, and in 2011, uh, at the risk of being modest, we made 33% without having to do what I consider to be manipulation, okay? And that's what he did in Herbalife. And if it wasn't, if it wasn't Ackman, I wouldn't give it, you know, I'm, I'm not here to change the world, but this is what he did. He got a, a bunch of in, in, innocent investors, retirees, they're going to lose their money so Ackman could show a good record at the end of the year. And by the way, took an inordinate risk because in a company like Herbalife, you can ask almost any pro, you don't go 20% and, but what the hell, he's not risking his money, he's risking his investors' money. You go in and you got 20%. And if there's ever a short squeeze, which uh, well might be in Herbalife, what the hell does he do? I'd like him to answer, where does he get the stock to, 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 when they call back all the stock? Let's say there's a tender offer for Herbalife, and they call back the stock. And if you know, if you know Wall Street, when there's a tender offer, everybody calls back the stock you borrowed. And if they ever does it, that stock could rush to 100. What the hell does Ackman do? I'd ask him. He's on the phone. He's right here on the phone. I'm, hey, happy, Bill, I'm happy to answer if I get a chance to speak. A short <laughs> okay, a couple, couple of interesting things. Number one. And Bill, let me just say quick, we have to be quick because we're at the end of our, okay. our road here, okay? Okay, so number one, Carl's free to make a tender offer for the company. Carl, you want to bid for the company? Go ahead and bid for the company. Hey, hey, you don't have okay. to tell me what I'm free to do. Okay, I well, okay. maybe you <laughs> okay, don't. Number one. Sure. Number two, obviously, we don't think there's going to be a tender offer for the company. We don't think this company is viable, okay? We don't think any person is going to write a check for 5 or $6 billion to buy a business that we believe is fraudulent. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Carl Icahn 
says that he doesn't like the behavior, says it's bad. Meanwhile, 2003 at the Iris Zone Conference in front of 500 people, Carl Icahn pitched Trinity Industries, which he was short, and he was short 22% of the outstanding shares, according to Fortune magazine. Carl, you can tell us whether that's true or false, but you did precisely that, so I find it interesting that you have an issue with what we did in Herbalife. In Herbalife, we simply provided to the public full transparency on this investment, 330 slides in detail, not scaring people, but going through the facts about the company. Okay, we did exhaustive research over a year and a half. Scaring people, okay. you could have and we will be either proven right or we'll be proven wrong. Okay, we shorted the stock. We have not covered our shares. We believe in what we and we have more to come, by the way. So uh, right. we have uh, we we have some questions that the company has given us the opportunity to ask, and we will have responses for every issue they raised in their res responsive presentation to us. And what I thank Carl for is he certainly helped highlight Herbalife and the issues at Herbalife. And I don't, my guess is that Carl bought Herbalife if he did, because that's what he, someone at his shop leaked to the press, and he flipped it out when the stock went up, and he made a good trade. Congratulations on a good trade. I don't believe there's any real investor who can own this business long term, because we believe it's a pyramid scheme. We believe you can prove that to a wait, high wait. degree of certainty. Uh, right. Hey, uh, I, I appreciate, Bill, that you called me a great investor. I thank you for that. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for you. But I'd like uh, to ask you, congratulations on what could trade. I, I, I sort of missed that. From 2014 to 2017, Herbalife's revenue declined gradually. The decline was not as precipitous as Ackman probably expected, but it was moving in the right direction for his short position. But from 2017 through 2020, inexplicably, the revenue started to increase. Despite all the effort Ackman put into trying to expose the company, new distributors were still signing up and the company was making more and more money. The strong financial results from the company caused the stock price to increase, and in 2018, Ackman finally threw in the towel and covered his short position. It's unclear exactly how much he lost from the trade, because he changed the size of the position from time to time, and for some periods he bought put options. From the time he started shorting it to the time he covered, the stock increased by roughly 80%. Based on the size of his position, he easily could have lost in excess of $1 billion. This bet, along with his disastrous investments in JCPenney and Valiant Pharmaceuticals, caused his fund to suffer four consecutive years of negative returns, and his assets under management declined by more than 60% as investors pulled their money out. Since closing out the Herbalife short, Bill Ackman publicly said that a humbled Pershing Square would return to his value investing roots and start afresh. In the two years since then, Ackman has actually made an impressive comeback. In 2019, he made several huge and successful investments that led his fund to 58% returns on the year. The first was in Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company that returned 20% over the course of 2019. Another hugely successful trade was a large stake in Chipotle, which more than doubled in 2019. Ackman was bullish on the company's new CEO in efforts to become more technologically savvy. His fund's concentrated positioning, usually only holding less than 10 different stocks at a time, allows his fund to achieve extremely high returns even when only a few of his stock picks do well, but especially when most of them have great years. In 2020, he matched his fund's 2019 performance in only a couple of months with his legendary coronavirus trade. In that trade alone, he made $2.5 billion for his investors and a nearly half billion dollar paycheck for his own company. This comeback has landed him among the top spots on Forbes lists and revitalized his name as one of Wall Street's most admired investors.